I can hear you. Did it open up? No. You have to wrap it up? Yes, there's four parts. Oh my goodness. I'm on the last one. Excuse me. My camera died halfway through filming that and I don't remember what side my hair was on, so if I look different, then like, <laughs> deal with it because I'm bitter. <laughs> Today I'm here with part three of my June wrap-up 2018. I read a total of 28 books this month, so I had to split up my wrap-up into four different parts. I have the first part in my Cramathon wrap-up, so if you guys want to see the books that I read for that, that will be linked down below and up top. And then I've already filmed two other parts of this wrap-up. This is the finale, so the last seven books that I read of the month. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have for this wrap-up is Glass, and this is by Ellen Hopkins. It is the sequel to Crank, which follows Christina, who gets addicted to crystal meth, and this is basically just following her more down her downward spiral. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I definitely did not enjoy it as much as I did Crank. I found it really hard to feel sorry for Christina based off of the choices that she was making. I'm assuming her decisions were because she was addicted to crystal meth, but your girl has never done drugs, so your girl has no idea how the mind works while they're an addict, so the entire time I was just like, this girl is stupid, like just stop making dumb decisions and you'll be fine. Obviously life does not work that way, but I found it very hard to connect with her at all. I also found it very annoying how nobody seemed to want to help her. I just personally think that if it was me, I would want to give that person help, but it seemed that the people around her just didn't care that much that she was going through this. Like, obviously they cared, but they weren't reaching out to try to give her any help. They were just like, well, it's your decision. Like, sucks to suck. I did find out that the Crank trilogy is actually like a loose retelling of Ellen Hopkins' daughter's struggle with crystal meth, which I thought was super intriguing about the story, but I still just could not connect, so gave it a lower rating. Then the next book that I picked up was Fallout, which is the third and final book in the Crank trilogy, also by Ellen Hopkins, obviously. And I ended up giving this a 3.5 stars as well. It follows Hunter, Autumn, and Summer, who are Christina's three children. It basically just follows the three of them and how Christina's addiction has influenced their lives. I really liked how this book showed how much one person's decisions can affect so many other people. I definitely liked Hunter the best. I felt that Autumn and Summer's stories were very similar and it was kind of hard to distinguish the two after a while. I almost gave it four stars but I think that the ending was just way too abrupt for me. It came very quickly and it just kind of finished and I was like, uh, oh that's it? Like we're done? Oh. Alright. I just wish that there was like a little bit more even though this book is so chunky. I just want to know what happens with the kids and I felt that there was a lot of loose ends that weren't tied up so kind of bummed about that. The next two books are actually part of the same series and I ended up writing them the same so they are The Fifth Wave and The Infinite Sea by Rick Yancey and I ended up giving both of these four stars. So the fifth wave follows four alien waves of invasion. The first wave took out the electricity. The second wave came as a tsunami. The third wave came as this deadly plague that wiped out pretty much all of the human population. And then the fourth wave came as the silencers, who are deadly killers. Nobody knows what the fifth wave is, but everybody is convinced that it will happen at some point. Cassie believes that she is the only remaining human on the planet until she meets a boy named Evan Walker. I heard super mixed things about this book, so I was very hesitant to pick it up. I've had it on my shelf for over two years now. And so many people like it, but so many people also say that it sucks, so I was like, I eh, don't know if I'll like it, but I finally decided to pick it up, and I'm so glad I did. I found it super entertaining. 
although cheesy at times. I thought that the beginning was super slow, but it, once it started to pick up, it was very action-packed and I really enjoyed it. I really liked the writing style and the alternating perspectives, although at times it was kind of hard to distinguish who was who. So I was thinking like if they had like headings on the chapters that told you which perspective you were reading from, it probably would have made it a lot easier to understand because you would be halfway through a couple of the chapters and be like, oh, this is not Cassie anymore. My bad. Another like minor issue that I had was the insta love. It was so ridiculously fast. It got super annoying super quickly. Especially when one of the main concepts of the book was don't trust people and then the first person you meet you fall in love within five minutes. It was a little bit, you know, questionable with your decisions there. It kind of felt that the romance was just thrown in there for the sake of saying that there was a romance in the book, but it probably was not necessary. I also kind of hated the ending a lot. I was not satisfied with it whatsoever. I did really love every single character that was in the story. I think they were all unique and they all developed very nicely and they had their own personalities which I loved. I really liked Cassie. I thought she was super badass and I liked how she would stand up to anything on the path to find her brother. Definitely liked her a lot more when Evan wasn't in her life but she was still okay once he was there but definitely way better when he was not a thing. I also really loved Zombie and his crew. I thought they were so awesome together and I loved their banter and just their whole dynamic was great. At the end of this book I still didn't know how I felt about Evan. Now I know he annoys me. So then The Infinite Sea again four out of five stars. It basically picks off right at the end of the fifth wave, it follows Ringer mostly, who is one of Zombie's crewmates. Definitely, definitely liked her perspective way more than Cassie's. A lot of people say that they don't like the second book and that it was basically just filler and like not needing to be written. I think I'm the unpopular opinion because I like this probably more than the fifth wave, personally, probably because of Ringer. I just found her to be so badass and I love her character so having her as like the main focus was awesome to me. Definitely did not like Cassie as much in this one as the fifth wave. She was just like a lovesick puppy dog which really pissed me off because I did not like Evan at all in this book. I was just kind of like, okay leave, bye. But then like everything that Cassie said was about Evan and I was like rolling my eyes at it half the time. I did really like how we got more of a backstory on Evan though, as well as Pound Cake, another one of Zombie's recruits. Liked that a lot. It was really interesting. I also really liked the introduction of two characters, Grace and Razor. I think they're going to be great additions to the story. Although it was a bit slow at times, I was very invested in the story and what the fifth wave actually was because Vosh, the like sergeant guy, kept changing what it actually was 60 million times and it kind of drove me crazy because I still don't know what the heck is going on half the time. I get what the fifth wave is but I'm very interested to see how the trilogy ends. I'm hoping that I like it. I haven't read it yet. Plan is to read it in July but I'm hoping that it's like a good finale. Fingers crossed. The next book I have is Dear Heartbreak. This is a collection of letters that real teenagers wrote to YA authors and it's basically the YA authors writing back to these teenagers. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I think that it was really well done the way that they did it. Basically the teenagers would write to Heartbreak and then the authors would like tell a story that related to what these teenagers wrote and how they like overcame it basically. I think that it will definitely have a letter for everybody in it for all different situations. I just think it was really well done and the raw vulnerability that it brought to the table was so great to read. I definitely think that it's going to help a lot of teenagers but also adults deal with some of the experiences they have and realize that like it happens to a lot of people and you can get through it and you'll be okay. So overall I think that it's an important book. It comes out December 2018 so 
you guys can check it out once it's actually available. The next book I have is Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart, and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Jules, who is an orphan, and she ends up befriending a young heiress on the run named Imogene. As time goes on, their friendship becomes a little bit rocky, and Jules has to reinvent herself. I found the way that the story was told very intriguing. It's essentially told backwards so like chapter 18 to chapter 1 it tells like the events that happened leading up to the beginning of the book or I really liked the unreliable narration half the time I didn't even know what was going on even at the end of the book when you get to chapter 1 and you see where everything started you're still like wait what Personally, I think that the beginning of the book was way better than the last half. The last half I was honestly kind of bored with it at that point. The beginning had me hooked and I was like, what the heck is happening? I'm confused. And then it just got super boring. Overall, like I don't think it was a bad book, but I don't think it's going to be anything memorable for me. Like I don't need to reread it. I don't really care about it but it was entertaining at the time even though I was confused most of it. And then the final book that I read this month I actually loved so much and my mom had been trying to get me to read it for a while. She got it for me when I was like 10 and I just could not get into it at that time so then I finally picked it up now and obsessed with it but it is Graceling by Kristen Kishore and I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Honestly, probably could have been a five except for one like little thing that I was just not having with it. The book follows Katza who is graced with killing, a skill that she really does not want. The King Rhonda uses her as a pawn in order to enlist fear in the people that owe him money. Katza has always despised her uncle for trying to control her and so she decides to start a council which basically fights for justice. On a mission one night to rescue a prisoner, she ends up meeting the Prince Poe, and everything that she once believed changes again. I think that the writing style of this book was so well done. It holds you right from the beginning, even though it's very simple. The plot develops at the perfect pace, and it's not predictable at all. At times, it was kind of boring, especially when it's just them walking across big distances, trying to travel from place to place but the action scenes definitely make up for it. I think that the author did an amazing job with the world building. It was so clear and vivid in my mind, the places that they were traveling and what characters looked like. I also found the idea of the Gracelings so badass. Like, some of the things that these people could do was mind-blowing to me, and I really liked learning about the different things that they could do and how every single one had a different grace and nobody had the same. I loved Katza and Poe, both were amazing characters. Loved them by themselves, but I also loved them together, and I loved their romance started off as a friendship and it was very slow burning and took a very long time to develop. Katza is super stubborn, such a strong-willed character, very independent, and I loved her so much. I love how she grew throughout the story and how her character developed into being able to depend on other people but still be very strong-minded herself. And then Poe was just such a gentle little angel baby unicorn. He was so sweet. I also really love Bitterblue even though that is the stupidest name ever. She is such a great character. She's just super feisty and scrappy and her little commentary makes me so happy. Like I said I ended up dropping half a star because of something that was repeatedly just getting on my nerves in the story. The author seemed to be super negative about like marriage and commitment and children. She just seemed like super preachy about how terrible it was for a woman to get married and have kids and stuff and it just got super old super quick so other than that I was super into the story. I'm definitely going to be picking up the second book if I can find it anytime soon. I definitely want to see where the story progresses to. So if you guys haven't read Graceling, super underrated. Alright guys, so that was all 28 books that I read for the month of June. Check out the Cramathon review and check out wrap up number one and two for all the other books that I read this month. But let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you all thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!